it's incredible to think two years ago I sat this very chair and we just won the league we promoted first seen it under Chris Wilder and two years on here we are sat after a mad crazy very Sheffield United weekend uh, to say the least promoted back to the Premier League and it just seems incredible all those years sort of kicking around trying to get out of Division 1 and then in three steps here we are it's uh, mind blowing it really is for fans for staff for players and I'm sure the manager as well incredible and on Tuesday we get another chance to get on the open top bus make our way from beautiful downtown Bramall Lane up to the town hall pay tribute to this incredible feat once more unbelievable and if it's anything like last time thousands of people lining the streets up there just outside the town hall itself all waiting quite rightly to give a huge round of applause is that the word just get behind them praise what they've done and enjoy that moment you know growing up as a blade i certainly never thought i'd see things like this for me it was never what supporting Sheffield United was all about. It was always the club that my dad gave to me, his dad gave to him. You know, my brother took me, my older brother, as I've said many times. And as my dad used to say, it's for life, not for Christmas. Uh, Sheffield United wasn't a choice in our family. It was mandatory. You just signed up for the first, first point you could ever get to be brought to a game. That was it, you were done. Um, so it's going to be a fantastic day, Tuesday. I can't wait. Uh, a few of us are involved, which is uh, makes it even better because it's all about memories. And it was funny, you, you think about memories and things stir memories, photographs are, are often the best thing. One of our patrons, Don Dickinson, a while ago now bought what I think is one of the best photograph albums I have ever seen. Uh, it was put together by a man called Jasper Redfern. And Redfern, again, we mentioned before, and I make no excuses for doing it again was an absolute pioneer in the field of sports, cinema and photography. And back in the day, I mean, on Tuesday, we'll have our media team there, we'll have our marketing team there, and some of the social media stuff we've done this season has been brilliant, last couple of seasons, and it gets better and better. But it had to start somewhere, and I always think that, as a football club, we were probably one of the really early pioneers of, I suppose, what we call now social media, and Red Firm was the man. Red Fern was attached to Sheffield United from about 1898 and he ran a photographic studio in Sheffield. Um, I think he started out doing his team pictures to be honest with you. You get a lot of the old team pictures with Sir Jasper Red Fern Sheffield um, and a lot of the individual player cards that you get back then. But Red Fern was also the first man to realise this new thing that was coming around then called cinema. This really had got a place in the future. Um, and he attached himself to Sheffield United not only as a stills photographer uh, but as a, a cine film uh, maker for the club and he had some great marketing ideas you know in our house we've got a circus poster a Victorian circus poster and it advertises um, it's for the Lyceum actually say circus poster it's just like you'd see these Victorian billboard things and it advertises sort of midway down the bill April the 29th 1889 the final of the English Cup between Sheffield United and Derby County see it here now just imagine that by then you've got to go down all the films hand cranked so it's quite slow and you don't get much of it to be honest with you but so we had to go down to the Crystal Palace where the game was filmed Redfern crank it get the film in a tin get it back to St Pancras station get it back to Sheffield and get it to the the Lyceum or the Hippodrome whatever it was at that point so people on the theatre bill with Charlie Chaplin whatever it was could actually watch it. Just imagine what that must have been like in 1899. Incredible. Um, in fact, there's one instance a little bit later, and again, it's a cup final against Spurs at Crystal Palace in 1901, where there's actually reports uh, in the board minutes that they've had to hold the kickoff off so the players can give Redfern a hand to pick this huge tripod up and walk off with it and put it at the side of the pitch. And one of the reasons you never really get goal action in those days, it's so hard to hand crank it and manually turn the camera and you're only getting a relatively small amount of film for minutes of work you just can't get it the speed of the goal 
uh, prevented it. Now going back, this this photograph album that we uh, one of our patrons bought. It was an album done by Redfern and presented to the man who was then the director of football, a man called Tom Bott. And in those days, the United Board was very different to how it is today. Um, I mean, Tom Bott was a wealthy fishmonger. You know, he obviously got a bob or two, but he got time away from his businesses to be able to involve himself with Sheffield United. Uh, and at the time, you got other people working and doing the same. I mean, one of the great founder fathers of Sheffield United FC was Charles Stokes, and Charles Stokes was the first ever Sheffield dentist. But this photograph album is truly stunning. In fact, it starts in 1898, which is the year we won the league championship, 1897-98, and it rolls into the FA Cup winning season, and it becomes a document of Sheffield United's games leading up to the cup final, which in itself is incredible. But when they beat um, Derby 4-1 on the Saturday, Interestingly enough, they travelled back and played their last league game. That's right, that year against Derby at the baseball ground on the way back up. Was that 1902? It's one or the other, even I forget. But um, when they came back to Sheffield, they had a victory parade. Now, as we said on Tuesday, that's going to be a beautiful double-decker bus all wrapped and, and look the absolute business. Back then, there isn't any buses, not diesel buses or motor buses. Everything's drawn by horses. And these photographs show the horse-drawn carriage, which looks like something off of Wells Fargo. You know, you see uh, John Wayne or Steve McQueen riding shotgun on it. It's a black carriage drawn by four. And on the top, very precariously seated, as to be said, are all the team, Fatty Folks, Nudge and Needham, Mary Thicket. But all dressed in suits, sort of bowler hats and top hats. It's very Victorian. And it's starting up from the station and it shows you going up what I would have said is probably Commercial Street before it was widened. And in the Yorkshire Bank building you've got people in the top looking out on the team. And it's gone up High Street, up Fargate. And there's a great shot of it actually turning up Fargate in the days when it was a road. Thousands and thousands of people. Um, black and white so no colour but you don't get any, you know on Tuesdays it was two years ago. It's just to see a colour, red and white stripes, yellow day glow shirts, hats, rattles, noise, colour, truly brilliant. I mean, we've got thousands of red and white flags being delivered up there to hand out. To see a red and white, Alley La Rouge, for those that remember that. Um, but one of the best photographs of them all, and I think the sort of balcony at the town hall, I used to dream of what it'd be like just to go up on that balcony, you know, and just take the applause of the thousands outside leading up to Barker's pulling on Pinnison Street and round there. Uh, but that balcony's tiny, and I think health and safety says you can only have six people <clears throat> on there at any one time. You may remember when he lost Kieran Freeman over the edge of it two years ago. Um, I don't know if they'll let us up there again, to be honest. Uh, but at the side, as you go further up, there's a sort of window, <clears throat> which is more on um, Surrey Street. And suddenly, obviously, Redfern's taken this photograph from the road, but it's the directors. So they've all crammed in this little box and all waving, very, very jolly, not very Victorian at all. Um, and I just wonder what it must have been like back then. You know, you get these sort of winning dinners. I mean, that's a cup final for that parade. And I know for a fact that the club didn't celebrate with the fans, as it were, and have a dinner until September of that year. So sort of seven months after winning it, six, seven months after winning it, uh, they had a dinner at the Cutlass Hall. So there was nothing instantaneous about it, but you know, imagine how austere it could be in Victoria and Sheffield, all these thousands of people, all dressed in suits and flap caps and mufflers, turning up to the town hall, which was quite new then, 1896 it opened, I um, to salute another Sheffield United team. And here once again, on Tuesday night, we'll be doing it for real. Uh, and I've said it before, I never dreamed as a blade. I'd see one civic reception, let alone two. I don't remember one when we won the league in 80, 1982. Could have been one, can't remember. Um, I can't remember one for years, to be honest. I don't know if the Bassett team had one. I know we did the Neil Warnock when we did the triple assault. And I know we did uh, when we finally went up in 2006. So I've seen a few, to be honest with you, but it should be a fantastic day and one that I think go and remember it and enjoy it because they're the things it's all about. And as I say, I mean, for all of us, these last few years 
have been incredible. Um, and it's something special. It really is. I can't wait to walk up with the coach and get up there and see the noise and the craziness and just follow on from what was an absolutely unforgettable weekend. You know, those of us luckily to be down here when the Leeds game ended and see the celebrations and sort of lead into the Player of the Year event on Sunday night, it just flew. It really did. And we were saying walking down, they always say every great book should have a fantastic ending. And it was towards the end of the night, John Egan asked me if they could get up and do a song. And I panicked a wee bit, as you do. Asked Kev Cooks, our media officer, what he thought. And Cookie said, hey, yeah, it'd be good, that'd be all right. And the rest, as they say, is history. Um, what a great ending to any book. Uh, what a great song. So, John Egan, I think Simon Cowell will be knocking on your door for that one. And I'm sure, outside Pinniston Street, outside the Town Hall next Tuesday, that there'll be a couple of renditions of that. And I dare say it's still as well on Sunday. So, all to play for this weekend. It's still not over. A few memories of a fantastic photograph album, which we'll have on display at the end of the summer. We're going into next season for the Premier League. Uh, some great images immortalised by one of the first ever cinematographers and photographic uh, geniuses ever attached to a football club. Just to finish it off, one of Red Fern's great innovations after Cinefilm was that on his seaside sideshows, which he had two, I think he had one in Skagnet and one in South End, he launched the idea that for a shilling or whatever, you could have a photograph of the inside of your own body. And this is when x-rays first began to come to the fore. And uh, he did really, really well with it. Sadly, he died of radiation poisoning. So it just goes to show you that even the best ideas, sometimes you've got to think twice. So that's a bit about Jasper Redfern, a bit about the Blades of 1899, and a little bit as well about the Blades of 2019. And this fantastic end to a truly memorable season. Enjoy your summer.